So this is about, um, oh, that's got louder. Um, this is a question about deep argument inspection for, for syscalls um, that Christian had talked about and I had talked about on, on the list. Um, the, first, the first obvious thing is why do we want this at all? Um, and the problem right now is doing syscall filtering, you can only look at the, the numeric arguments that are coming in. So you can see the pointer number, but if you attempt to dereference that, uh, you end up with a, a race condition because some other thread might be able to change it out from under you before you actually get into the syscall. And I'll, I'll show you the details on what that looks like. Um, but the reason to actually do that filtering is uh, programs right now set up their syscall you know, isolation filtering or whatever. They'd like to be able to do more than, than this and get to file system isolation. Say, I want to be able to open only these files or not these special files or anything, but there's no way to do that. Um, and probably the more pressing matter um, that Christian talked about is the, the newer syscall APIs. You can talk right. about that. Clone 3 and OpenAd2, for example. So uh, basically, uh, APIs that gain a lot of new features over time, and usually they indicate new features with flag arguments, and traditionally we have passed them and registered, but for example with clone, we have already run out of flags, and so at some point it was like, why don't we make it part of a, uh, of, of a Spark, for example, and have it a 64-bit flag argument, and have it extensible, and so on. And, uh, but the problem is clone 3, for example, for process creation, it will gain a lot of new features, also security features that might, might be relevant for Chrome, and so on. Um, and so you want to use them in those environments, but you also want to filter out all of the things that you want the process not to do, and you can't do this right now with Clone 3, which means it's it's out of scope for, uh, for, for example, Chrome. This was actually an example that Jan provided by that a while back. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you can't look into the structure that the pointer is pointing to, you can't filter it. Um, and then there's also the case of past monitoring, like, hey, let's just get a notification from SecComp that it's going to do this open and just report it, but you have to go dig into the memory yourself as the monitor, and you could get lied to because it might change stuff from you. And similarly for sort of active monitoring where you're going to intercept it and then do something about it, um, you know, the, the cases for this also you have to, like right now what's happening with containers is they'll get a notification, read the memory, and say, oh, I do want to intercept this one and do it on behalf of the, pr the process. Um, but, right, but then they have to also handle all the other ones that are coming through right now because there's no way to look in to see, do I want to handle this specific one? It's very similar to the, the syscall, we syscall APIs. Um, so as a quick background on the eye chart I made here. Um, this is the syscall flow. Um, so you enter the kernel as the first step, um, and then there's a bunch of ptrace entry hooks. Um, and those will block back up to user space. And this, the, the result of coming back from these events is, you know, a, a debugger or whatever else is doing the ptrace listening might have changed anything. Uh, you know, any of the memory or the registers or even the syscall number itself, or it might request to skip the syscall or do anything along those lines. After that, then the setcomp hooks run. And there's a whole bunch of different outcomes for, for setcomp. It might just kill the thread or process, syscall similar to ptrace, it might just log it and continue. It may send a signal back to user space and wait for that response. Um, uh, similar to the user, user space notification on the file descriptor, which is like ptrace, only a little bit less uh, slow. Um, but those are blocking. And seccomp also issues ptrace events. Uh, so if that event happens and you come back, uh, any of those things may have changed again, and you actually have to restart the syscall hook processing because you may have entered a different syscall. Um, this is a bit of a hack, and you have to stop further recursion, otherwise you just end up in a loop forever. Um, and then you actually get into the actual syscall, if, if allowed. Uh, in the syscall, you're going to copy user space memory in for parsing. You're going to examine you know, what you got out of user space and turn in kernel objects or whatever, and actually perform, uh, you then perform LSM hooks, which are looking specifically at kernel objects, and then actually do whatever work you were going to do. Um, and to note here, the LSM hooks right now are simply a 
accept, reject. They can say, fine, everything's cool, keep going, or they can issue an error, and this gets aired back out. Um, and then you get the Petrus exit events, which say, hey, the syscall is over. You can't really do anything about it, but here's the notification, and then you return to user space. Um, so there's already kind of this ugly loop in the middle between StepComp and Ptrace, um, which I called out because we're going to sort of come back to that. Um, so the first observation is Ptrace in the wrong place to do deterministic analysis um, of, of these syscalls because, uh, going back up, where Ptrace events happen um, is well before that memory gets copied in to user space. So who knows, your Ptrace is going to basically be lying to you if there's a, a thread competing against it either as an attack or an accident. Um, so similarly, SecComp is in the wrong place for this because of exactly the same problems. Um, and then to get to LSM, LSM is not syscall filtering. It's from sort of a higher level abstraction. The LSM hooks tend to be, you know, I want, I want to work on file objects, not on open or stat or, you know, access or all the other things that work on file objects. It's a much uh, higher granularity. However, we did recently grow an exception for this for the safe set ID LSM, which now contains the context from which a hook, from its hook got called. Like, was this from set ID, from set UID, from set DID, uh, whatever. So there's an argument to be made that the LSM hooks are the right place for doing um, deep inspection because now you're, you're actually working on the kernel objects you were caring about. You're done, there's no races, nothing's happening. Um, but there's presently no unprivileged LSM. There's no way to load policy or filter or whatever um, from user space as a program. You know, if Chrome is starting up, it says, oh, I want to do these file name filters. There's no way for it to do an LSM. There's no way for uh, any of that to work. Um, so similarly, should, this, should deep inspection happen via SecComp at all? You know, maybe it should be through the LSM. The problem, the, the problem with doing it from syscalls is if you really do want to limit access to a file or an IP address or you know, some, some aspect that is arguably a state in the kernel, um, you might miss a place where that's exposed. You know, let's say you're only filtering open, but you forgot to filter rename, you lose as a filter writer. But if you filtered from working on an object, you know, on the LSM hook, you're not going to get, it's not going to get missed from, from uh, a syscall. Um, so an earlier thing I tried to do was to create an association between SecComp and the LSM layer, where you, you know, through this, when you go through the SecComp hook, it says, oh, I actually want to filter this, I want to do deep inspection on this. And then later, once you've actually entered the syscall, you're in the LSM and you say, oh, now I'll do the like seccomp LSM policy and analyze these objects. And then the question was, and then what? Because right now there is no, like there's no LSM return value for give it back to seccomp. So we'd have to invent that and then add a seccomp exit path. And if you, for example, change the, the, sec, the syscall that you wanted, you'd have to start back over at the top. Um, so it, it was looking really scary. Um, I, I, I don't know. Mainly it just seemed overly complex and a strong indication that there was a lot of layering violations happening here and I didn't like it. Um, that was one thought. The other thought was, well, let's just look at uh, Well, we sort of can't and how the ABI works at the LSM layer. It's too late to do a bunch of the things for the same reason we talked about. And where would we move it to? We'd move it into each syscall. It'd basically be moved into almost exactly where the LSM hooks would be. But you'd have to remember to do it for each one. But you want to do it on a syscall basis. So no, seccomp probably shouldn't be moved. Um, the problem was initially, well, can't we just cache a copy of the user space memory. That way we don't end up with a, a race condition where if the seccomp filter is going to filter it, we'll copy it early in the, in the entry path. 
And then if seccomp says, yay, good, it'll continue on. And the syscall, instead of recopying it, will use the cached version. Except you can't do that because what you're talking about may have changed in the case of, for example, file names and other stuff may resolve in the kernel to something else before, uh, at one time before you actually get into the syscall, it may have changed what it's attached to. So you're making a filtering decision about the wrong thing. So still there's a race condition. So okay, how about moving argument parsing? So uh, if we define the argument types more completely, uh, we might be able to copy it out and do parsing into an object. Uh, this is sometimes easy in that it's just a struct, like a lot of the syscalls um, that were mentioned at the beginning. Um, but some things are significantly more complex, uh, like doing file name resolution is really, really ugly. Um, and then there are some syscalls that will walk lists of structures that are defined in user space. So you have to analyze, like the, the logic for that is really terrible. Um, you can talk to Dimitri and, about syscaller and how they had to process those very strange cases. Um, but um, you don't necessarily, we don't necessarily need 100% coverage on all, yeah. you know, yeah. they don't all need to be uh, deeply inspected like this. Um, so yeah, there's, I have a couple other items on here, like is there a question, like do, if we move it earlier before some checks are, are we gonna introduce information leaks? Um, I don't know, but we could still do this piecemeal, um, like Christian said. Uh, I, yeah, I guess my, uh, when we started discussing this, uh, I think we very quickly came to the realization that doing it in a generic way for every syscall is probably the wrong approach especially for these kinds of reasons, like all of the crazy stuff that we just outlined. Um, and maybe not every syscall needs it, only the ones like a lot of user space processes usually care about, like Clone 3 they probably care about a lot, probably Open Ed 2 for security reasons they care about a lot, and these usually just rely on structures that have also well-defined types. So um, that's something we could probably do. Um, unless somebody has a really good idea on how to do this generically while avoiding all of these issues. Yeah. Um, and this is sort of meant to be a, a discussion or starting it. I wanted to sort of say, here's why we want to do it and here are the ways it doesn't work. <laughs> right, so, so the first question I, oh, sorry. The first question I think I, wanna, I would uh, want to pose is if, if you, people think that making it piecemeal, like for a specific, syscall one at a time we think would be worth for user space to do makes sense or not. Otherwise I just run around with the mic. <laughs> Got a question about that. I think it does make some sense, but how would user space be able to know what's supported? Like how would they discover this this piecemeal support? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yet another problem. <laughs> is it is it doable? Uh, but that's probably not enough uh, second knowledge on my part. Is it doable if you when you try to register it in your filter? So because you would have to mark. So this was Andy's idea, right? You would yeah. have to mark a sys call as filterable while right. like a new macro. But or something. You, yeah, you need some. But you're gonna get the inval back from the kernel, and what do you know? How right. Do you know which one of the Right, and the, and the kernel would have to parse your filter to decide what syscall you're talking about, and yeah. that's not a good idea. So we need some ah. metadata exposed in some fashion that says, here are all of the syscalls on this system. Well, we ship kernel headers nowadays with the kernel, so we can just say. Just parse the headers. Wasn't there an idea to make that as well? Wasn't there an idea to expose syscall? Sorry, uh, maybe I'm misremembering, but I remember that a while ago someone was discussing oh, sorry, yeah. having, sorry, having syscalls exposed like in property a list of syscalls. Could you make right. sense like that to have also, is this filterable effectively? Yeah, it would be nice to have the metadata. I'm, I'm getting to you next, sorry. So if we had BPF system uh, call filtering through eBPF and we had an eBPF uh, helper function that could take a register argument, which is a pointer, and copy it into some extra memory and change that pointer into a pointer that into that memory for the rest of that system call? Wouldn't that well, maybe work? It doesn't end up changing our race condition situation as a problem. And this actually... Well, wait, is, why? You copy it once, and from that point forward, you use that, that new pointer. Yeah, but that's the other... You have the yeah, so... Um, so we can, we can cache the memory copies. We can do that, but then we end up with objects that change what they're actually... 
pointed to, right. like a file name, uh, between when the filter analyzes it, when the, when the system call would then use that cached version of the, of the path name, that file may have been renamed. So that was exactly what I wanted to ask. Yes. That feels like you're doing the filtering in the wrong place. If yes. you want to filter on the object and you want the object, we've got LSM hooks for that. So the LSM right. hooks get the final fully parsed kernel object. Exactly. So I, I don't think that invalidates the, the plan yeah. though. Because yeah. what you said is, let's fix syscall filtering. And as a way to fix syscall filtering, I think it does fix syscall filtering, but it doesn't say, that everything can be done with syscall filtering. Right. There are some things you should do with syscomp and some things you should do with LSM. And if you want to do something about what file object you land on, you that has to be done in LSM. That can't be done in syscall. Right. Um, right. Yes. Sorry. Um, yeah, one point I wanted to raise, because this relates to something, bunch of hacks I'll be talking about on Wednesday. Um, Filtering syscalls through syscomp, it kind of exposes kernel implementation details that you can never get rid of from the API, API after you've done it. Um, and I'd, I'd echo the point made just now that although um, filtering on the machine level sys syscall arguments is generic, that it kind of feels that means it's equally bad for any purpose. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> so... The, yeah, I mean, the, it allows you to do things that you didn't foresee and couldn't do any other way. So right. has some the, advantages. One of the issues with the LSM, like this talking, trying to get an unprivileged LSM policy of any kind installed is a, there's another project working on that and attaching eBPF to, to be that language. Um, uh, ends up, at least in earlier versions, ends up exposing the LSM internals. Right now, at least, the system call interface is an exposed ABI. We can't change the path of the arguments, um, or we can't change like the, the meaning of a path. We, it is, the arguments are fixed, what they're supposed to point to. It's a matter of our, the kernel's processing of those as they're coming in. And I completely agree, filtering is happening in the wrong place, but the LSM then is deep enough that it's now you would expose internals if it were the LSM. So you have to somehow teach the LSM hooks about where they're coming from, how they're being hit, what syscall they're coming in through, because we have to retain that ABI knowledge, which of course violates the purpose of the LSM hooks, which are designed to be agnostic <laughs> of the exposed interface. Um, I, I yeah. guess another option, I don't know whether this makes sense, you could define new events that can be filtered using setcom, but are purpose designed for that rather than piggybacking on something that's already there. I'm not sure I agree with the statement that uh, SecComp is too early. I think uh, SecComp is in the right spot for what it does. You can't do everything with SecComp, right. but the right. deeper in you do the filtering, the more uh, surface area you expose to attack. Right. So doing filtering at SecComp is desirable because it is so early. Mm. The fact that you can't do certain types of filtering with it is, is not really a problem, right? right? I think you really can get away at least from at least from my uh, oh thank you very much uh, I think at least from uh, my perspective uh, thanks for taking over um, at least from my perspective uh, it's we don't need the path based filtering like uh, open like doing the open filtering and rename filtering to SACOM feels like feels wrong to me um, exactly for that reason like you're dealing with strings that like at a what way later time actually just become relevant when they are turned into kernel objects um, so it's it really feels like a way better approach for stuff like uh, filtering flags argument which are parts of of, uh, of structures and which do not like change into other kernel objects yeah I mean aren't you aren't some of those like file descriptors so you need to figure out what they're attached to but anyway, that turns into like an LSM question all over. And so going back to the discoverability thing that I talked about earlier, I just remembered that I actually added a way for the setcomp syscall to detect um, if a filter flag exists in the current kernel. And so maybe that something similar could be done where we extend the setcomp syscall to add a new operation that says, can we do deep argument inspection on this specific syscall? 
Right, we can also we can also just quickly back to the FD stuff. Uh, we can probably also skip FDs, like syscalls with FDs at the beginning, like all of ZNS and so on. You pro well, ZNS you probably could even, because you can filter on the flag argument, it doesn't matter, but yeah, the FDs we should skip as well. Sorry. Um. Oh, so something. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the um, yeah, like I think I think the comment that was made of like um, seccomp is where it where it should be, um, and so doing the the, the user space copy and caching might actually be reasonable. Um, so yeah, so long as you don't actually try, as long as you don't expect to actually go and look at the object at that point. Like I mean, we will do some amount of string compare and whatnot on those paths maybe. Like it might just be a trivial that like it must have that suffix or that prefix or something, and that you could do safely. Um, what the file on disk is going to be, that's that's left for the LSMs to figure out. But that would still get us the ability to like do string compares on things like the um, um, man file system name and some other stuff. Uh, do some basic string compare on some paths if we really want them to have like a prefix or suffix or something like that. Would let us do the, the checks against the structs. Um, and for anything where you actually care about the kernel object, then that should be LSM territory. Okay. I mean, I Grab someone in the back. I think not only is that still racy, the problem is the dreadful races you're talking about already exist. Uh, a classic one was a recent subject of a bunch of LWN, LWN, LWN articles, the process ID, which is obviously racy because a process could be killed and recycled between the check, between the check and the, and I was, th I was thinking, oh, that's not a problem. You can use PID FDs, but you've just proved that you can't check the FD either. I, I'm just wondering what arguments are there left that you can safely check, which are actually any use? If it's nothing which can correspond to a kernel object can be checked, is there actually anything left that you can check other than the length of what you're reading? Or, or rising. It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is why the LSM is where it is because you're you can attach policy to the kernel objects effectively. Just, sorry, this may have already been covered a couple times, but why is LSM plus BPF not the answer? Uh, um, right now, there isn't an unprivileged way to do either. Um, so LSM plus BPF plus unprivileged BPF then. Uh, un unprivileged. EBPF sort of doesn't exist because it needs, uh, there is not right now a privilege policy for how it should work. That's right. sort of being argued about right, right now. Exactly, so like it's um, one theoretical yeah, answer. Yeah, and it's, it's, one, it's one path. Um, right now, that was going to be the solution to how do we do an unprivileged LSM? Because, oh, we could just load EBPF into the LSM hooks and off we go, which was sort of my hope for, oh great, we can do a deep inspection and it's not SecComp's problem. That would be awesome for me, thank you. Um, but there's a, a lot of, there's still a lot of conversation in and around how to do that correctly, but it, it does seem like doing the deep argument inspection needs to happen at effectively that layer. But does it need to be through seccomp and then we come back out and do crazy things or is it entirely on the LSM side? It's still unclear to me. So uh, just to add to what Case was saying, you already said it before a little bit that um, having it eBPF in the LSM also means we're having to expose gadgets at the LSM layer and an ABI out to user space for eBPF to use. And that can leak information through side channel attacks from deeper in the kernel. So not only from syscall return values, but you can make filters to uh, do timing-based attacks to read internal data from those gadgets. So it becomes a real concern for the security modules that there's this eBPF module in there that can potentially expose some of their, their state as well as just their own stuff to user space. Okay, so at least no one is going, well, obviously you forgot about this perfectly good solution. <laughs> Set sock up and get sock up. Right. Um, those are classic examples where 
everything's available in the integer that's passed in as a pointer to it, right? Um, right. There's no reason why you couldn't filter those with seccomp except for the fact that you get a pointer. Um, right, and then, there's and the, tons and, of those. Right, and that matches the 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 new mount API and the other stuff. Were, were you looking to use um, the user notification feature to do your filtering and dig into these pointers, or were you looking to go into CBPF and actually dereference the pointer and look at it down in the bowels of CBPF? In, in, in your question being, if we do it, if we want to do it in kernel, Correct. yes. Okay. Um, so one of the uh, the example I always give is we intercept uh, intercepting the setx adder call, for sure. example. Well, anything that has a anything that has a struct on it that you can't really filter, but you're still interested in some parts mm -hmm. of uh, like you can tell on the information whether or not you want to do the syscall in lieu of whatever is calling out to you. Uh, you have to intercept all of them though. And yeah. so you have to do all of the work and, th and that's for the container for yeah, example, that that's, really, uh, that's really annoying. Um, okay. Right, so for make not syscall for example where you have a dev t argument that you can easily inspect, you have a bunch of others so you can register a filter where you basically can filter anything out that you're not interested in. You get only notifications for the very specific make not syscalls that you want to perform in lieu of the container. But intercepting anything that has pointers means you need to do all of the syscalls that would otherwise work also for the container, which is really annoying because you have to assume credentials and so on. You might end up in races, and yeah. So that's why we needed to have in okay. kernel. That's why I thought, just making sure. Yeah, but I, I know what you're getting at, though, which is the, yep. okay, so now I have another thing I need to examine. How do I examine it? What's yeah, the path? Yeah, totally. I, right now, I'd kind of gone, well, we can't even design where it should be. I don't know how we're going to do it. So the question, like, when I looked at it, it was initially, I thought, oh, this is easy. We have a structure now. That's Packet data, again, that's basically the same thing. We can just say, oh, attach this filter to that deep inspection of this structure. And it was like, okay, specifying that might start getting painful. If only there were maybe an extended BPF I could use <laughs> to do that. <laughs> um, I'm dreading the libsec comp side of things as well of this. That seems really hard to write. Yeah, that which the other part is like, well, seccomp already specifies what it's what it can inspect, which is this like the detail on the syscall and nothing else. It's like, okay, so now if I mark it for deep inspection, do I append series of structures on that one and now make it a dynamic size or do I, yeah, the, so the actual implementation of that is still totally unknown to me. I, I had these thoughts, but it's like, where do I put it first? <laughs> So one more thing, because it, it keeps uh, popping up, the LSM eBPF stuff. Um, one of the other reasons why it's really difficult is just from a pure upstreaming perspective, right? So you have the eBPF maintainers who are not sure that they agree with a bunch of other people that unprivileged eBPF is safe. Then you have the LSM guys, which is that totally in their right to do. They're saying that you're exposing internals that we may not want to expose, and we had that exact same discussion at LSA a couple of a couple of weeks ago, where the exact same issues were raised. So this is it's whenever this is going to happen is if it is going to happen is is a question. And there is not even sure. I think that some people are afraid there's only going to be one BPF or eBPF LSM because people don't want to maintain multiple. There was raised as an issue as well, so, and there may be another eBPF LSM coming up, so. I was gonna say stacking, but that's actually solved for micro LSMs. Solve for micro, solve for medium. Yeah. Um, Everything except you start uh, doing uh, weird uh, things with. It's not solved for anything interesting. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Comments? Or solutions? Yeah. Or suggestions? Please. Please. <laughs> So you mentioned that it's possible to change the system call, skip the system call, et cetera, re-enter yeah. the system call. Can you change one system call into multiple system calls? Not right now. Okay. But I love this idea. That's totally insane. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no. I mean, I <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I suppose. That's yeah, because you can't, re like, what do you return to user space? <laughs> would be fun. But yeah, that, that's actually one of the issues is sometimes with the, a lot of the filters you want to say, oh, this got handled for you, so pretend that everything was fine, but don't actually run the syscall because we've already done the kernel state change you wanted. Um, and there isn't, like, right now we just have to invent that in either case. Like, if it is at the LSM layer, we have to say, effectively, skip but pretend it was fine. Yeah, well, for what, it's worth, for, for what it's worth, I and probably many other people who've done this sort of thing with, uh, with ptrace have run into exactly this problem. And really, it's the same problem of was what on earth do you return if you decided not to run the syscall at all? You often just use the same technique as a shell, uh, as a shell um, pipeline would, and you return success unless one of them errors, and then you, you just return whatever the error code was and hope that the caller <laughs> works. Yeah. And usually it, the caller works, and if the caller doesn't work, you can just blame the caller. It was an error, and it didn't right. handle it. They're, <laughs> they're in, right, at least in LSM, there isn't a stop without an error <laughs> code right now. You could say, oh, e-access, and then everything fails all the way out, and user space goes, oh, I guess I didn't get that mount. It's like, no, no, you did. We did it for you in the, in the, in the process monitor, but, yeah. <laughs> you could at least get a long way for the case where you want to there, you could do some user space inspection, right? If you have, if you had used the second notifier FD and you get the resume feature, uh, then you could technically, <laughs> well, that would be for Chrome, for example, a process that watches the syscalls that are being performed and then looks at, for example, the clone syscall being performed and then looks at the flag argument and then looks at the flags and whether it's in some predefined list, but then you're putting all of the burden of security out to user space and probably the for example, Google doesn't want to add a watch-up process for Chrome that just watches syscalls. And then you tell it to resume, that's my yeah, point. Ah, you can only deny. Yeah, so you, you can only allow continuing if you oh, so you have the same problem in user space, isn't that pretty? <laughs> and you're parsing it again, which is what the kernel yeah, is supposed exactly. to do for you. So yeah, it keeps coming down to, this really needs to be at the LSM layer, but we don't expose the syscall ABI to the LSM enough to make decisions at the LSM layer about where it came from, which we have actually started to do. So maybe that is the path to solve that particular problem and then figure out how to parse it. So, so I, an example I had, for example, is you want to create a socket and set some socket options on it by default. And that's the case where one system call changes into a dozen. Right. That's and true. it doesn't seem like LSM is the right answer. There, I mean, it's a single system call. It just has multiple side effects right now. I mean, the, the set sock op stuff, the, the muxing or whatever that happens in the one, is that the 32-bit compat or something? I don't remember That's which one that is. To do with not the Python. Yeah. Anyway. It, it didn't seem to me like that was particularly different from the new style, like structure passing ones. All right. So are we done, or I, does any? I think so. I think we're. <laughs> I think we're. We've reached the same level of success as the upstream graphics talk. So. Um. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.